the record, I am in the Jordan Travis camp for a variety of reasons. I think he's the known product. I think, yes, he, you know, he was the quarterback for a, a bad season last year, but I feel like he got the experience needed in the offense. I still, I think Mackenzie Milton is probably a better passer. I'm just hesitant about the legs. And uh, if we opened against anyone else, if we opened against Jacksonville State, if we opened up against Wake Forest or something like that, I could get away with it. I feel like you, you cannot risk that knee against Notre Dame. Yeah, I'm, it just hurts the offensive game plan because you take – if you're – let's say – I mean, it, there, I doubt – you know, I doubt we'd hear anything this week, early next week. I think what Mike Norvell will do will wait to the last second because guess what? You could do that. I mean, you are facing, you know, a top 10 team in your own house. It's going to be a gigantic game. You know, all the emotions. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster. You know, they're going to have the Bobby Bowden thing going on. You've got, finally, fans are back. You know, everybody's going to be excited. It's going to be a roller coaster. So you want to do everything you can to win this game. So I don't think he needs to name anybody. But this whole time, though, I think all of a lot of people have been kind of picturing an offense where you have two guys out there. Whereas right now I am at the the thinking, at least to start off this season, that that's kind of uh, and a it's wavering right now of what would you can do with Notre Dame. He's like regarding a- Jordan Travis and and McKenzie Milton, I just felt as though the signing was was a good risk to take. Mm-hmm. I still believe it is yeah. because of all the positives that he brings outside of being a quarterback. And you took a, a roll of the dice in regards to whether he was going to be able to come back and be anything close to what he was in 2017 and 18. Um, mm-hmm. Recent developments don't look good, but he's still with the team and still competing to a certain extent. And, and we will see how it plays out. I do know that Jordan Travis needs to be a much better passer than he was last year. And, and I haven't seen enough of him to see. Uh, I've just seen the spring game to know that he's taken those strides to be the kind of passer that he needs to be for this team to be a winning team. Mm-hmm. I think it's good for the lo- I mean, real quick there locker room. Number one, that is fantastic. You got a winning, you're bringing a winning culture guy in, which this team hasn't seen that. They really have not seen a winning guy come in here like this, like a McKenzie Milton and helps with the film room. And it helps with the competition that Jordan Travis needs and, you know, not feel a little comfortable. And I'm sure that's, you know, minor, but I think there was still some, I don't know. I'm not going to state anything on it, whatever, but it's, 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 uh, I think because the Melton has been a great addition to FSU, but it's, it's just a thing that, you know, overall in that quarterback room, we'll keep an eye on. If you need forward. the words UCF and national champions, I was going to have figure out some. No, way. God, no. Mark is in charge of this, but I was going to figure out some way to take control. Mm, uh, I can't no. go up. No, I mean, I get it. I understand you, you want the best quarterback out there I just from a and maybe this is just my communication side here from the PR aspect I feel like it's a major PR hit to bring all the pump of McKenzie Milton McKenzie Milton McKenzie Milton and then you start Jordan Travis that being said if you're asking my opinion I would want Jordan Travis right now mm-hmm. the known is, is better than the greater unknown and yes I, I do agree with Mark you, in a perfect world you get something similar to what McKenzie Mellon put on the field in 2017, something similar to what he put on the field in 2018. But for right now, the truth, the fact of the matter is you're talking to a guy who hasn't taken a a snap in a game in over two seasons. Mm -hmm. I will wear a pit jersey on one condition. First of all, you you beat us one time. Let's calm down. All right. You you kicked our butt one time. I was there last year. Rob Krause, Jason, I believe makes a good point here because let's say, if you're Mike Norvell mm-hmm. and coaching staff and you see the pluses and minuses from each quarterback and you determine, okay, they, w- what they're going to give us is different, but it's going to come out about the same, then why not play Jordan Travis since he's got the extra year in 2022 um, and could improve even more? He's got more upside from the standpoint of he's just got more development in front of him and hopefully you bridge to a better football team in 2023 and you're ready to to hopefully hand it over to aj duffy at that point i agree yes and no i'll say this much i think the issue with jordan travis is we he started a season last year where we've talked about the, the 2020 season was a season 
of, of, in, of insanity. It wasn't a real football season. It wasn't a full 12 game season. You know, you didn't play the scheduled games. You didn't play the teams you were supposed to play, when you were supposed to play them, where you were supposed to play them. It was just a weird season. I worry about Jordan Travis's health if he has to play the full season against, we talked about it, against the Notre Dames, against the Clemsons, against Miami, against North Carolina, against Florida. You know, you look at teams like NC State. We've talked about how tough of a schedule this is going to be. So that's my one concern is his health at that point. My other concern is turning it over to A.J. Duffy so quickly. I'm a little bit hesitant to turn it over to a young quarterback so quickly. I'm one of those guys who – I'm the old school guy. You know, Charlie Ward waited until his junior year. You know, Dan, Danny Cannell waited until his junior year. Thad Buzzer waited until his junior year. The, the list goes on and on in Florida State history. I feel like you've got to give them a little bit, bit of experience. So, my, you know, like you said, I would almost let Jordan play this year, play next year, and, and then maybe Duffy by that point would be a redshirt freshman. He's had a year in the system. I'm still even a little bit hesitant at that point, but almost at that point you would have nothing left. So if you look at here, okay, so the most yards he threw were 210 yards against Jacksonville State. The most yards he threw against the FBS team was that game against Notre Dame when he threw for 204. Um, he threw for two touchdowns against Duke in his final game. You know, you had the game like against Pitt, a Pitt of all teams, the horrible Pitt team held him to 106 yards passing and sacked him five times. You know, that, that's that thing. He, got, he, he was sacked 12 times over the course of the season. He threw for 1,056 yards, six touchdowns, six INTs. No, his numbers weren't great, but that was also a season of – you know, like you said, hell on earth. Talk is bit. Obviously, Jason is throwing the in the horribles just to, just yeah, to make a point there. I was there. I was in the stadium when you kicked our butts. I was there. I, I watched it. It was a decent team. 